Today we are setting up a free VPS. Now we're going to be using Oracle's free tier service to do this. So oracle.com slash cloud slash free. You can get started for free. It's just a sign up process. Fairly simple. This is not the easiest tutorial I've done on the channel, but this is a great way to get started in learning how to manage a server for free. If you've never tried it before and you were curious, check this one out. The other great option I'll remind everyone, if you're not aware already, is vulture.com. I've put a link in the description for that. You can get a 30-day, $100 credit, so you can actually get started on here for free. This is a much more powerful system if you just want something really good straight away. But if you're just curious about setting up a VPS, maybe try this one out. As I said, signing up is pretty straightforward. You just put in your details. Now, you will need a phone number and a credit card to verify your identity. I've been using this for months, and I've never been billed at all. I've been on the free tier the whole time, so totally fine. It's been totally free for months and I've had no issues with it. So I'm going to skip ahead through this sign up process and just head up to the sign in page, going to log in and let's head to our dashboard. All right, we're all logged into our account. We can see we're using the free tier account here. And these things that say always free eligible, we're free to use these. And we can manually set up a web server using this create a VM instance. You might actually notice that WordPress has a quick start here. That's only for the paid accounts, but we can do it manually just fine with this option here. So let's go there. First thing we can do is give the instance a name. I'll call that idea spot tutorial. And then under image and shape, we want to click edit here. And this is where we choose our operating system and processor. So for our operating system, we click change image and we are going to go for canonical Ubuntu here. And we want to use 2004, the regular version, not the minimal version. So this looks all good. Let's select that image. And for the free processes, there's not a lot of choices here. We click on this one. The default one is this AMD standard micro. So this is a two gigahertz AMD Epic. This is pretty good. The other option is the Ampere ARM processor. Now the thing about the ARM processor is you can get a lot more virtual CPUs and memory for free with these processors. So we can actually go up to four CPUs and we can go up to 24 gigabytes of RAM with these type of processors. So I might select that one. These are not always available. So if they're not available, just go with the uh, regular AMD micro. So let's try and see if there are any available today for these processors. And then just scrolling down, the only other thing we need is to save our SSH key. So we save that private key and save the public key there. And so we've got those keys downloaded onto our hard drive. So keep those handy. We're going to use those a bit later, but that is all there is to it. We can go ahead and click create. So here we've got an error saying that we're out of capacity for the standard flex uh, processor. So that means we can't get that 24 gigabyte RAM one for free at the moment, but we can try again later. But anyway, let's go ahead and change that to the regular AMD micro. There we go. And we'll select that one. So this is the default one that loads up when you load this page. So we'll go with that one, the regular default one, and then we can go ahead and click create. So this is setting up now. We can see the private IP address is loading there. So we just have to wait a second. So now we want to set up our virtual cloud network. So we've got our virtual cloud network here. We're going to click that one. We can see our subnet will be automatically created there. Click that one. And the default security list is here. So we want to allow access to this server for HTTP, HTTPS and our web panel. So let's go ahead and add these rules. So let's add an ingress rule. And this one, we click stateless there and we put in for the CIDR, we put in 0000 slash 0 TCP protocol. And this is for port 80. We can give this a description as allow HTTP and we add that one. And we'll do similar for HTTPS, so stateless 000 and 443 here. And we're going to allow HTTPS, add that on there. And the last one we add is for our web panel. We're going to be using Cyber Panel today. So that is on port 8090. And I'm going to allow web panel. There we go. I'm going to add that on. So that looks all good. We've got stateless, yes, TCP, port 80, port 443, and port 8090. So HTTP, HTTPS, and the web panel. So our VCN is all set up for our server. So let's go back to our instance here. We can go back to compute and instances. And we'll see our server that we just set up there. 
So we'll see our IP address here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that IP address. Now to do this, I am using Windows and I'm gonna be using PuTTY. So you can get PuTTY from putty.org and just go ahead and download it. You'll notice PuTTY comes with a few different things. PuTTY and PuTTY Gen is what we're gonna use now to convert those keys over to PuTTY format. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a conversion here. We're gonna click import key. We want the private key. So that is this one that ends in dot key, not the one that ends in dot pub. So that's this one here, open that one. And we're gonna save that private key and click yes here. And I'm gonna do this one as idea spot uh, tutorial key. There we go. And close out of that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and load up putty here. So we just get our IP address that we got from there, pop that IP address in there. And I wanna save this as uh, Oracle demo and let's click save. And we also wanna add that key on here. So let's go to SSH under auth there. We browse for that key that we made on putty key generator earlier. So we'll open that one. And then we go back up to the session there and we're gonna save this one there. Now we can click open. Now we just click yes here and we can log in here. So we're gonna log in it as Ubuntu. I'll make the text on this terminal a little bit bigger actually so it's easier to share. Now that looks better. The first thing we'll do is change to super user. So I'm gonna type in sudo uh, su dash. And you'll notice that the dollar sign changes to a hash mark. So that means we're on super user now. Now we're gonna install our web server. So I'm gonna use cyber panel. This just takes one command. I'm gonna share this command on my blog so you can just copy and paste it in. So it looks like this. I'll put the link to my blog in my description. So just check the description. You can go ahead and just copy that uh, line of script here. And then back on our terminal window, we can just right click to paste that in and we press enter. So this is gonna start installing our cyber panel server. So first thing we do is in the cyber panel installer, we press number one here. So there we go, number one to install cyber panel. And we're gonna install with open light speed. That's the free version. So we're gonna go with number one here again and full install capital Y for yes. Uh, remote MySQL, we're gonna go with capital N for no, and enter for the latest version here. We're gonna go with a random password here. You can set your own password or you can use a default password. So I'm gonna go with random, but uh, you can set one if you like. Memcached, capital Y for yes. Redis, capital Y for yes. Watchdog, we press enter for yes. And this is basically it. We just have to be patient and let this install. So it's gonna install all of the software that we need to run our web server. So just be really patient here. This takes a while, maybe about 20 minutes. So go make a cup of tea and come back when this is done. I'm gonna skip ahead to the finish of this part. So at the end of this, we'll get our credentials that we need to log on to our web server. So just be patient here. So this looks like it's finished up just fine. Took about 20 minutes. What you'll want to do here is copy out these credentials. So you have your passwords and usernames to log in to your panel. So I'm going to copy all this out. In Putty, you can just highlight it with your left mouse and then go ahead. It'll automatically copy it. And then I'm going to paste this into a notepad. So I'll just paste those in here. And the most important thing is this admin uh, password and username. So we're gonna log in to our cyber panel using this in just a second. Back to our terminal, when it does finish up, it's gonna ask you to restart the server. So you just go ahead and select yes and press enter. So it's gonna restart that server. So we'll just wait a couple of minutes for that server to reboot and then we'll log into our panel. So back in our browser, we'll be able to put in our IP address that we installed on, on port 8090. So that's uh, colon 8090. It says that in the actual info that we pasted earlier. So basically that part goes in the browser and then we log in with admin and the password there. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's gonna get this error because we don't have HTTPS installed yet. We're gonna fix that in just a second, but we'll click advanced and we're gonna proceed. So I was using Google Chrome. Your browser might be a little bit different, but you should end up on a page looking like this. And we can just put in the admin username and password from our notepad from earlier and then go ahead and sign in. So this is our web panel. This is where we can manage our websites and databases and everything. What I will do is set up WordPress in just a second, but what I wanna do is rather than logging in from an IP address, I wanna link a domain there. I wanna put an HTTPS SSL certificate on there so we can log in with um, HTTPS. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the domain I'm gonna use for this demonstration is hosted on GoDaddy, but this is gonna be similar for wherever you are, whether it's um, Namecheap or somewhere similar, 
but um, I'm going to use newidea.site to do this. I'm going to just go manage the DNS to point this DNS over to our server. Basically, wherever your domain is hosted, find the DNS management tool, and we're just going to change the A record to point to our server. So this is our A record here. If there's not an A record, you should be able to add an A record fairly easily. Go ahead and uh, point that to the right IP address. This is our server IP address. Also, if you don't have a CNAME record using www, pointing that to the root, then add one in like that as well. Uh, you can also, instead of putting at, you can actually put the name of the um, of the website there too. But at is working fine in GoDaddy. So just these two are all you really need for this to work. And this is the important one, the A record. Now this can take half an hour or an hour or so before it starts working. You can use the tool whatsmydns.net to test the domain name and just check that it's hitting the IP. This one looks like it's working just fine. So we can go ahead and set this domain up in CyberPanel. To set the domain up, we go to websites and we're gonna create a website. And here I'm gonna choose the default package, admin it as the owner, newidea.site is our site. So I'll pop that in here. So there's our domain and our email, and then we'll go with PHP 7.4 is best for using WordPress at the moment, but that will change in the future. But at the moment, 7.4 is the right one. Um, I'm gonna tick all of these. I'm not gonna use mail for this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and click create now. So that just takes a minute. I've got a success message here and we're gonna to go to SSL now. I'm gonna to go to host name SSL and let's just select that website that we just created and issue SSL. This will take a second. And there we go. Now we can access CyberPanel at our domain on port 8090. So we can go ahead and do that now. In my browser, I've just put in our domain, newidea.site. Hang on, I forgot the dot. There we are. Newidea.site port 8090. So let's go there. And here we are at our login screen. We can see we've got SSL now. So we've got SSL security and we can log into CyberPanel through our actual domain name. So let's go ahead and do that. The admin username and password are the same as they were before from our text file that we saved in Notepad earlier. And we'll save that one into Chrome. Now we can actually install WordPress. So let's go to our website and we can list the websites here. Here's our website. So let's go ahead and manage. We can see that we've got SSL from Let's Encrypt and that will expire in 90 days, but this will automatically renew. So no need to worry about SSL renewals. CyberPanel will do that automatically. If we scroll down, we should get WordPress here. So WordPress and Lightspeed Cache, we're gonna install that. So it's just a matter of filling out the form with your title, username, a good password, email address for the admin, and leave this path blank to install WordPress on the home directory. So go ahead and install. So the WordPress install looks all successful. What I'll do now is turn on HTTPS redirects. So I'm gonna to go to websites and list websites again. And then under manage, if we scroll down here, we should have rewrite rules here. And we want template is force HTTP to HTTPS. That'll force all the um, HTTP requests to be done through the secure HTTPS. So let's save that one. And that looks all good. So now if we head to our site, we can see that's working. We've got the padlock there. We can log in now. I can just type in slash WP admin and we can head to our login. So when we set up WordPress, we choose our username and password already. So we'll just pop those in there and let's log in. So the WordPress dashboard looks all good. One thing I will do under settings, under general here, is just change this to HTTPS in our WordPress database so it matches up with our setup, save that in. So that looks all good. So from here, you're pretty much free to install a theme, go ahead to appearance and themes, install something like cadence theme or Astra theme, get a starter template, build a site. The other thing you can do is migrate an existing website over here using something like all-in-one migration or duplicate a plugin under plugins, add new. I've covered that in previous tutorials, but let's head back to CyberPanel. There's a few extra security settings we can tweak here before we finish this up. So let's just scroll down here to security and you can look at the things that are already on here and there's some optional things we can turn on. So we've already got the firewall turned on. That looks all good. If we have a look at our uh, mod security conf, we can actually turn mod security on. That's a web application firewall. So it's worth installing that one and running mod security. So this takes a second to set up, but just be patient here. So that looks all good. We can click save changes and that's all done. The next thing worth doing here is under mod security rules packs, we can add the rules for mod security, turn those both on. So the core rules and mod security 3.0. We get a little success message there, so that looks all good. The other one we can turn on is 
CSF. So that one is this CS, CSF. Go ahead and install that one. Just wait for this to install. So that looks all good. We've got our success message here. So I think we're all good to go. And the other thing you can do from now is connect to Cyber Panel Cloud. Cyber Panel Cloud is a free service by Cyber Panel that lets you do central access to all your Cyber Panel and WordPress setups. And you can do upgrades on the Cyber Panel when Cyber Panel brings out new versions. So uh, I've covered that in a previous tutorial. I'll put that link in the description as well. Check that one out. But this is pretty much all there is to it. Uh, free WordPress set up using a free panel on a free VPS. So hit like if it was useful, drop a comment saying thanks or let me know any questions that you've got. Uh, that, but that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.